Evolution is against love. Why? Because it says that your life is a mistake. You are a mistake. Successful mistake, but nevertheless a mistake. Is that loving? Evolution is against truth, as we will see. Why? Because it gives people lying proofs. It is a lie. And as such, it tries to mislead people, to manipulate them, to take their free will from them. That's not loving at all. And lying proofs go against mind and logic too. Evolution is enemy of mercy. Why? If one would help all diseased animals, humans, who are not fit to survive on their own, one would support the evolution. Theory of evolution says that the evolution, the progress, demands that those who are not fit must die before they can ever have children. If people would become merciful, then the humans would devolve, according to the teachings of evolution. So killing, raping, cheating people who are not so bright, powerful or evolved is not only acceptable but desirable and needy in the worldview of evolution. To be merciful and to help such people goes against the evolution. Be it material or spiritual evolution, evolution promotes idea that one's life, namely yours, is worth more than life of less evolved being is. As such, it provides an excuse for wars between races, nations, sexes, even for wars in families. And therefore, it is not a small wonder that evolution goes completely against the Bible, since Bible teaches that one should think. Love the real God, who is love and truth, with all your mind. Bible teaches that the life of every human being is worth more than the whole world. It teaches equality. And this is love. But love cannot be taught, learned, deserved. It can be only given and accepted. And the word of God gives us such love. Bible is explaining us that the Lord gave us mercy. You receive mercy and therefore you can give it to others. You are merciful, loving. God says that the strong one, the fittest, should protect the weak ones. But evolution teaches that the fittest are the strongest because they have overcome the weak ones, be it by raw power or by intellect. The Bible says that one should overcome the world and the world teaches evolution that one should overcome the people and in doing so, making the next step in evolution possible. God will hold responsible those who don't care for the weak ones, but the false God of evolution teaches that evolution will hold responsible those who support the weak ones. Did you know that there is no real proof for the evolution? There is namely no mechanism which could make the evolution possible, not one. Some people, they do realize this, but what do they do? They start to claim that some aliens or spiritual beings were governing the evolution. The latest popes are claiming something like that. But such an idea leads people away from the God, from his word, the Bible, from his narration, how he created the world, toward another gods. And another gods or aliens, the more evolved beings, are in the Bible, in many cases, known as the devils. Let's take a look at material evolution. Lie and cheating are good. If lie will save your body, then lie. And what is the goal of such an evolution? The next step where people will become gods. And what are possible ways to achieve that? Science. We are messing with DNA and we are messing with our lives and lives of our descendants. That's very bad. We are producing so many toxic waste, deadly nanotechnology. All those things promise one to become immortal god, but one can clearly see that those promises are lying ones. Science is leading people toward death. And even if those people would be successful in the next step, what would happen? A new being would be created. And this new being would overcome you. Humans would become the less evolved beings. And as such, they would become either enslaved by the more evolved ones or they would be exterminated. Another way which leads toward immortality in such worldview is to digitalize our brains and put them into computer or to make super intelligent computers which would become gods to us. Again, that would mean either enslavement of humans or extermination of them. If those artificial intelligence would be so clever, 
I don't see any reason why would they want to serve us. And what about copying our brains into computer? Well, if someone takes a photograph of you, is the photograph you? No. And what if one makes 3D photograph, is that you? No. And what if one makes a 3D video of you, is that you? Again, no. So you see, picture of your body, even very precise one, it is not you. And why then some people claim that picture of our brains would be us? But that is not all. Every human made copy has an error. Your brain would not be copied in the right way. And computer program simulating brains also contains errors. Its result would be an approximation of your thoughts. And at last, but not least, soul is being ignored. Soul, the essence of life. Claiming that that machine is alive goes against life. In the eyes of Christian, no machine in the world is worth more than any human. Any. Think about that and compare that with your value system. And what if one would copy one's brain into his clone? The same logic applies here. The copy would not be perfect, that is one thing. But let me ask you this. If you would have a twin who experienced practically everything as you have, is that twin you? It isn't, huh? What about spiritual evolution? It is about reincarnation and again, one race, one sex, one nation, one is the most evolved. And we are ever learning until we become gods. What is worth one life in the worldview of reincarnation? Not much. Not much at all. One life out of many. You see, such gods which believe in evolution cannot value life as it should be valued. What is the one of the most convincing proofs for the reincarnation? Little children who apparently remember their past lives. In the teaching of reincarnation, can the soul, spirit, leave the body? So there are entities who are floating around, spirits, ghosts. And those souls, spirits, ghosts, they can stay on the earth or go somewhere else. And when a new body, which is suitable for them, is made, they return and occupy it. And sometimes it happens that some spirits occupy a body which is already occupied by another soul. That can happen to some small children or people intentionally invoke gods in them. In a wish to gain power, they surrender their own body and their own power to such more powerful entities. They lose everything. They become demon-possessed. They don't possess demon, devil, the devil possessed them. There is still hope for them, of course, but let's return to those small children. They, in some cases, might tell us about the life of a man, woman, they couldn't know anything about. So what? What if the spirit of that person took partial or complete control over a child's body? If that is true, then the reincarnation, as it is being taught, might not be true. But what if that being is a deceiving demon, devil? One cannot know, can it? What if a soul is created? And what if it can die too, in some cases? And what if those spirits are hiding that from us? How can we trust them? Are those spirits which teach reincarnation merciful? Why would they help us? Everything is karma. You get what you deserve. If you suffer in this life, you have surely did something bad in one of your previous lives, they say. If one helps you, that is a bad thing. Why? Because you will need to repay the penalty the next life. And if one gives money to a beggar or buy him a food, that is also a bad thing. Why? Because in the next life or sometime in the future, he will return the good deed to you. You will beg and he will give you food. Do you want to beg? No? Then don't give food to people who have hunger. Give food and money to priests, gurus, wealthy men and women. This is the way where the teaching of reincarnation leads. To recognize a lie, one doesn't need to be a rocket scientist. Media has always reported that scientists have found the missing link. Look at the tree of life. What do you see? They are non-common ancestors. None. And those common ancestors, which exist only in an imagination of scientists and people, were known as missing links. Today, this word is unpopular 
because it shows us that something is not right with the evil religion of evolution. So, so many times it was reported that scientists have found this and that missing link, but over time it was revealed that all those missing links were not missing links at all. In some cases they were even forgeries. Artists have drawn the complete human ancestors. In some cases, the only clue they had, the real clue was one single tooth. Imagine that. So people were brainwashed by media over and over again, thousands of times, and when the truth came out, some media reported very briefly that this and that was not a missing link. In such a way, in the minds of people, it was implanted the idea that humans originated from animals and that we are animals. That's one way how magic, manipulation, lie, works and fools people. In movies, documentaries, in science, at school, they speak about evolution as a fact, and sometimes a scientific theory. But I can't see any observable proof which would support evolution. I see only observable proofs which testify against it. Evolution is a theory, they say. This was a tricky thing. Subtle lie. Theory, in a plain language, in a normal language, means an opinion, something which is not yet proven. But in science it means something which is already well supported by observable evidences or the majority of scientists thinks or claims that it is right. That's double speech. Cheating. Imagine that someone would lend money from you. And he would write, I owe you such and such amount of money. And when you would want to have your money back, he would laugh at you. In my language, this means that you owe me this amount of money. You silly boy. And that was done in the case of evolution too. People were told that this is just a theory and they went along, not knowing that theory in a scientific language means completely the opposite thing. How are we destroying logical thinking in children? Bible speaks about creation, how God created all things, but some people wanted to be wiser than God is. They have observed wrongfully, of course, that some beings came into existence without descent from similar organisms. Aristotle, for example, formed theory of spontaneous generation, but the faithful church believed God that living beings originate from parents. And when Aristotle was translated from Arabic back to Greek, some people who are thought to be Christians, I don't know so much about them to judge in those matter, thought that Aristotle is right, and so, as many times, Bible was proven wrong by limited mind of man. But what happened to me at school? It was said to me that in the Middle Ages there was a lot of superstition, and Middle Ages were connected in my mind and in mind of others with church and the Bible. So those people believed, and in my mind, people were saying that too, that life comes from non-life, without parents. And as a great success of human thought and science, it was mentioned one of the experiments which proved that this is not the case. Life comes from life. So science has disproved itself, but in mind of children it was implanted an idea that science proved Bible wrong. And in the next hours of biology class it was told to us that life came and could come into existence from non-life if there would be present the right conditions. At school, we were told that Miller-Urey experiment proved that life came to be by itself. Is that true? Well, there are some flaws with the experiment. According to the belief, the faith of atheistic scientists who don't believe the Bible, the Earth's atmosphere was such and such billions and billions of years ago. With what certainty one can claim such a thing? Molecules that were formed during the experiment were organic amino acids, thus proving, according to scientists, that life came into existence by itself. But there were some things which were not told to people. In experiment were formed left-handed and right-handed amino acids. The problem here is that right-handed amino acids are toxic. And that's not all. Hydrogen cyanide, formaldehyde were created too, among other toxic chemicals. The simple experiment was celebrated as the proof that life could come into existence by itself. The only thing which corrupted such glorious experiment was that chemicals had to be filtered so that amino acids were not destroyed 
and the right-handed amino acids, well, they were just neglected. That is so subjective, deceiving, corrupted. The other thoughts I had regarding this experiment were the following ones. Such a great experiment and it was not repeated over and over again in schools, be it primary schools, high schools, colleges, universities. A theistic-oriented system would use it for its propaganda over and over again, if everything would be fine with it. And the experiment itself was not repeated, as far as I know, while its author was still alive. Only after his death, more than 50 years after he made the experiment, the experiment was repeated. Something is just not right here. But let us assume that everything was right. Even if that would be the case, but it isn't, but even if that would be the case, the way from simple amino acids to DNA or to a simple cell is a very long one, and at each step science is completely baffled. DNA is a molecule which contains instructions how a cell builds its organelles. One of its organelles is ribosome, which builds proteins by reading the DNA or RNA, to be more exact, and by putting the right amino acids together, thus forming all organelles. That means that at the same time as the DNA came into existence, we don't know how, at the same time and at the same place, the first cell had to contain also a primitive ribosome which could read the DNA. Now, they say that there existed a primitive ribosome, but the thing is that such a thing was not observed. Every ribosome is a complex organelle. A primitive ribosome exists only in the primitive minds of a primitive people in their primitive imagination. But for the argument's sake, let's say that there existed such a ribosome. When the cell multiplied, it had to multiply its ribosome too. That means the instructions how to form ribosome had to be written in DNA. So by itself, a DNA came into existence, a ribosome came into existence, and in DNA there had to be written also instructions how to build the same or similar ribosome, a functional one. What is the probability for such a thing? Ridiculously small, in billions of years, and the whole universe of primordial soup cannot make this probability so great that it would be plausible. People are quiet about that. Scientists who can calculate the probabilities are quiet and people who are not able to calculate probabilities just believe those scientists. Calculation is very easy and easy to understand as we will see in one example later in lecture. But let me return to Miller and let's say that one day scientists would create a primitive organism using simple methods. Would that prove that life came into existence in a similar way? No. Why not? Let's say we would not know how to make cars. Scientists would find one and made a similar one, who would differ from the original. Would they prove that the original was made in the same way? No. So let's take a look now at some so-called proofs which for decades were proving and are proving the evolution according to the believers in evolution. The proofs for evolution were paintings of embryos. If we assume that each embryo goes through stages of its ancestor, then the similarity between embryos suggests or proves that we and animals descend from common ancestor. The problem here is that those paintings were a forgery but they are still in textbooks. Why? Well, evolution doesn't have any proof for itself, so if they would take all lying proofs out of textbooks, what would stay there? Nothing. Another problem is, as far as I remember, I might be wrong here, another problem is that so-called gills of human fetus or baby and gills of fish apparently resemble each other, but the case is that human and animal embryos so-called gills are not gills, since for their development another part of DNA is responsible. They look similar, but that's all. Of course they look similar. Even elephant, house, truck and a man look similar when seen from a distance. They are dot-like. And the closer one gets, the less similar they are. But one notice also some additional similarities between those objects and beings. 
By the help of imagination, one could imagine which thing evolved from another. But that is stupid. And the same stupidity is going on in science. Vestigial organs, another lie. Tonsils, for example. Doctors were so happy to cut tonsils out. They cut out tonsils of children who were healthy. Why? Because they believed evolutionists who claimed that this is a vestigial organ. But later they found out that tonsils has an important part in the immune system. It is not a vestigial organ. Did evolutionists and medical doctors apologize to people who were hurt by them? I don't think so. The point is that if there is some organ you think that it doesn't have any function, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have any function. If you are ignorant, that doesn't mean that some organ in human body is a vestigial organ. But such things didn't prevent fanatical believers in evolution from imagining things. They said that appendix is also a vestigial organ and tailbone. That is not true as it was shown by science, but they found another vestigial organs. Mutations Every possible mutation is destructive. That was observed in many experiments which were performed by scientists. But in school they told us, yes, that is true. Mutations in laboratory are harmful, but in nature there exist some good mutations. How corrupt is that? The same conditions should lead to the same result, but here science went against itself once again, against logic, common reason, against the truth. Proof which disproves evolution was used as the proof for the evolution. That's very, very deceiving, corrupt, evil. No wonder children cannot think logically. Their logic was slaughtered by the system. And children from yesterday are today you. You also have problems with logic. DNA is written in a language. It contains information and mutation cannot produce new information. But it destroys information. This was observed by science over and over again. Entropy, as a measure for disorder, is growing. Informations are being lost in nature due to copying and noise errors mutations. We could live in a world where this would not be the case. One could take instructions how to build a car and copy it, make some mistakes and one would get a plan for a fully functional ship or helicopter. But this doesn't work, does it? Because informations are being lost by errors mutations. If one wants to build a helicopter, one has to think to use his mind. And similar is with animals and humans. There is a mind behind it which implies that we were created by our creator. But let's suppose, for the argument's sake, that mutations or even sexual reproduction can make variety capable of producing new informations, new species. What follows? Natural selection. If evolution would be very fast, then natural selection would make evolution less probable. How come? If a pigeon would be laid out from a crocodile egg, would he survive? Or if a pigeon would be born to a polar bear, he would not survive. Such a phenomenon was not observed. But let's say, for the argument's sake, that such a phenomenon was observed. What then? Evolution is less likely also because of luck or lacking of luck. If a lightning or asteroid strikes pigeon or a fire kills him, even though he would be the fittest, evolution of pigeon would be stopped, and thus good luck or bad luck are making evolution even less probable. And above that, at the same time, at the same place, there would have to lay out also female pigeon, and they both would have to meet and attract each other to have descendants. How likely is that? Impossible. And what if evolution is slow? Well, in that case, the process of natural selection makes it not plausible, as people claim, but impossible. Once again. Why? Let's say that rabbit, which could fly, would have an advantage in survival. He would be more fit as the other rabbits are. For the argument's sake, let's say that the wings are the only thing which rabbit needs to fly. That's not true, but let's say it is. Wings are a very complex organ and let's say that it had evolved gradually. What that means? 
It means that while rabbit is not capable of flying, such an organ is for him disadvantage and not an advantage. He could be more easily entangled in bush with its half-evolved wings as rabbits without wings. Let me ask you a similar question. You would build yourself a rampart. Would at the beginning of construction rampart provide you any protection? No. Moreover, you would be tired from building it an enemy could more easily catch you or fight you. And what if you would have a heavy gun but not yet functional? Let's say it would lack munition. Would heavy gun be an advantage for you or disadvantage? Disadvantage. And similar is with rabbit or any other partially evolved organ. So you see, natural selection is preventing evolution. It doesn't make it possible. And above all, some organs, if not all, cannot be gradually evolved. Everything has to come into existence at once. There are many such examples in the animal world. Let's say a bug who is firing sort of bullets at other insects. It has two chambers loaded with chemicals. When they mix, explosion happens. If chambers would evolve gradually, the bug would explode before he could reproduce, thus making his evolution impossible. And if the evolution is gradual and slow, we would have to find many, many common ancestors, but we don't. Sometimes we imagine we have found one. For example, lungfish. Are they missing link between fish and reptilians? No. How can we know that? Because we know them very well. If we would know very little about them, for example, if we would find only their bones, we could think or even claim that they are missing link. And even in school, they say, Lungfish and, for example, platypus are not missing links, but you can imagine an animal that looks like them, you can imagine a common ancestor. They dare to say that in the name of science? What would those people say to someone who owes them a lot of money? What would they say when that someone would tell them, I will not return you any money, but you can imagine I have or that I will? They would protest and they would rightfully proclaim such a person a cheater. The sad thing is that they refuse to see their own corruptness. According to evolution, there should exist a mechanism which changes the species, but at the same time, there exists living fossils which haven't changed for 400 million, 200 million years. Horseshoe crab, crocodiles, sharks, ants, bees, in spite of sexual reproduction, which according to some people also accelerated evolution. All those existed when the dinosaurs existed. But according to the faith of evolutionists, dinosaurs have extinct 64 million years ago. Only small, warm-blooded animals, similar to rats, have survived. Dinosaurs, be it carnivore, vegetarian, sea, land, dinosaurs, big, small, all have extincted. But bees, ants, crocodiles, who are also cold-blooded, by the way, sharks, all those animals survived. They had enough food and dinosaurs hadn't. Strange, isn't it? And above all, in the previous video I have mentioned that evolution disproves the old earth. If evolution is true, then those living fossils, lack of common ancestors, and so on, imply that the earth is young. But if the earth is young or old, couple of thousands of years, or maybe at most around 12,000 years, then evolution cannot be true, because we don't observe it at work. Old Earth and theory of evolution go hand by hand. But one disproves the other, and when one is down, the other is also down. The tree of life, the animal and plant tree. There are no common ancestors there, they are missing. If evolution was gradual, we would have to find them, but we don't. That implies that evolution is fast, but we don't observe that. The final conclusion is that evolution is a wrong idea, wrong theory. Let me say this one more time. If evolution is gradual, the process isn't probable. And if evolution is fast, it isn't probable. Was I clear enough? Artist can be recognized by its work. And psychologists are also able to identify a person by its work. How come? Because person's work has some resemblance. And that is what we observe in nature too. Animals and humans have some resemblance. Why using this argument to disprove the common creator? 
Only because you want to be God? What kind of God? You want to kill and cheat the weak ones, your own babies? You want to lie, to steal, to murder, not to think, to believe a lie, evil? And not to be judged because of that? Go ahead, but you will be judged if you don't repent. But one can still believe evolution because it seems that it works, does it? So what is the trick? What is the magic here? Wrong imagination, wrong explanation of observable phenomenon, as usual, is the trick. People are familiar with selective breeding. But the question is, what is being selected? The old information or some new one? There is some variety in each species, that's not the question. The question is the following one. Is this variety only a scrambled information or can such a variety lead to completely new information? Can a cow evolve into a cow with a beak, for example? Evolutionists used an example of bacteria. Bacteria evolves because before it was not, but now it is resistant to drugs, they say. Well, let's take a closer look at it. They present drug as a key and bacteria cell as a lock. And when drug attaches to bacteria, to the lock, it kills or harms the bacteria. But over time this lock is copied wrongfully. The lock is being deformed, corrupted, the information was being lost. And so drug cannot destroy bacteria anymore. It is not that some new information was created, the old information was lost. Let me give you another example. Sometimes some people are born without hands. Many times the information for hands, it is still in their DNA, but it wasn't used. Let's say that police can catch thieves only when the police grabs their hands. But this thief would be without hands, so would you say that he evolved? That his body has some new information? No, the information was lost. Selective breeding or small population of people who reproduce only between themselves leads to so-called pure breed, pure race, but what is the problem there? Health problems. Hitler, eugenics, evolutionists don't want to acknowledge this. They ignore this problem because it testifies against their wrong idea, their blind faith. Actually, it is stupid what they believe and how people who believed eugenics wanted to go around this problem. They believed evolution, but somehow this evolution went wrong. Humans started to devolve, and to prevent this, one has to kill the less evolved ones or prevent them to have babies. If evolution went wrong in humans, why it cannot go wrong in animals too, and thus making it even less likely? Darwin observed finches, which were classified into many new species, but they were still finches. Dogs are dogs, cows are cows. They are very different but they are the same family, or species, nevertheless. Can the finches Darwin observed breed between themselves? I do not know. Very likely, yes, but even if they cannot, that doesn't prove evolution. The information in each particular species of finches was selected, taken out from the existing one, the DNA of the common ancestor, and over time they differ so much that it could quite easily happen that they cannot breed between themselves anymore. But there was no new information, new organ developed. Only variety, only variety. One has to go a step further and imagine that also new information could develop, some new organ, for example. But in science, everything should be evaluated, and why not this assumption, imagination, too? Let's take a look at a simple organ, let's say an engine, a moving organ of a one-cell organism, which is built from 10 different parts. For simplicity's sake, let's say that one cell organism has already produced those 10 different parts. They should be only put together in the right sequence. So what is the probability that this will happen? Processes in cell could bring at the first place any of 10 already manufactured parts. Then at second place, the cell could bring again any of 10 already manufactured parts. We have already 100 possible combinations, a third place, the same, 1000 possible combinations, a third place, 10 billion possible combinations. But let's say that there is not only one solution which work. I will be very generous in doing this estimation. Let's say that 1000 combinations would result in a functional organ engine.
That means that probability that functional organ would come into existence is 1 versus 10 million. But we didn't take into account the way those parts can attach to each other. We will make an estimation using a simple model of a plug and socket. If we are throwing plug from a distance of 1 or 2 meters into socket, what is the probability that we will plug the plug in the socket? There are two possible positions which make plug to fit in into socket. There is some tolerance to 1 mm or so, 2 mm. Circumference is approximately 4 cm, 40 divided by 2 and other orientations too, times 40 divided by 2, taking into account how much is the plug off center in steps of 1 mm divided by tolerance from 0 to 1 cm, factor 10. The probability is 1 versus 4000. In average, if one would throw a plug into socket 4000 times, each time differently, one would plug it one time. But let's say that in cell, this probability is only 1 versus 10. Because according to quantum theory, the happening on molecular level is a little bit different from the happening at the macro level, so therefore such an estimation. That means we have to multiply each step with probability 1 versus 10. And so we get the estimation how probable it is that such an organ would be assembled by chance. 1 versus 10 billion times 10 million. That is 10 to the power of 17. And what is the probability that the parts are the right ones? We make a similar estimation. Let's assume that all parts are made out of three amino acids, very simple parts. And that cell can use 10 different amino acids and not 20 or more. Each part can be made in 10 times 10 times 10 ways. We have to take into account symmetry and so on. Let's be generous and let's say there are only 10 ways. That makes probability 1 versus 10 to the power of 27. In a completely random generated simple engine, there is one functional engine per billions of billions of billions not functional ones. Let's say that cell consists of four vital organs whose structure resembles that of the engine. Probability that the mutation of the information which governs those four organs will be beneficial is 1 versus 10 to the power of 108 or even less. The estimated number of atoms in universe is 10 to the power of 80. Let's make a simple model which will help us to understand those huge numbers and put them into some perspective. Let's say that each atom in universe represents a cell and that each cell multiplies itself each second and that after multiplication is done, it dies. To get the highest estimation, I will ignore harmful mutations which are making evolution even less probable. How much time it would, in average, be needed that one cell organism would evolve into another functional one cell organism. The required time would be at least 10 to the power of 20 years. That's 100 billions of billions years. Compare that with 15 billions of years, which is the age of this universe according to science of today and yesterday. Let me say it in another way. The required time that new information would be produced by itself in such a case would be 10 to the power of 20 years. It cannot happen. In the world view of evolution, Adam and Eve and Noah's Ark are lies. But I hope you got at least impression that evolution might not be true after all. So what about Adam and Eve and Noah's Ark and dinosaurs? DNA of Adam and Eve and their descendants was not so corrupted as our is. At that time brothers and sisters could have healthy children, but after the flood things changed. After the worldwide flood, which destroyed practically everything. Imagine how rotten was the air and everything. Dinosaurs? Well, I have told you that evolution has problems with dinosaurs. 
Dinosaurs are mentioned in the Bible as dragons, since the world dinosaurs is not older than a couple of hundred years. Bible doesn't have such problems at all. It mentions them, but doesn't say how have they extinct. And the Noah's Ark? Scientists are counting millions of different species. But at the time of Noah, those species which belong to the same family, that's an approximation, had the same common ancestor, whose information was selected by the means of natural selection, if you want, into different species which we observe today. On Noah's Ark were therefore not millions of different animals, but much, much less. To count families would be therefore more precise, and when doing so, it becomes plausible that all those animals were in the ark. God is not a stupid God, and he put on the ark, not the greatest and the oldest animals of each kind, but very likely the small, the young ones. He is also not so dumb that he would put very hungry animals on board. They were more or less filled. Bear can live without eating for a couple of months, think about that. The food before the flood was more nutritious, and even today, the food is less and less nutritious. It loses its power due to our agriculture and climate changing. And so did plants lost their power after the flood too. So on board, there was enough highly nutritious food, enough space. And no, animals didn't eat each other while on board. Even today, some animals, even though they are natural enemies, can be friends. When you start to think like that, that God is not dumb, but clever, the Bible is not dumb anymore. It starts to speak. Adam and Eve and Noah are not fairy tales anymore. But you may believe what you want to believe. You may still believe that randomly picked up bones somewhere in Africa represent 40% of skeleton of Lucy, our ancestor, according to scientists of today. It is up to you. Do you want to believe a lie and die? Do you want that the light in your life is brought to you by Lucy and Lucifer and the word of lying man or the Bible, the word of God, and accept his mercy grace, which no one of us deserve, and in doing so become merciful, loving, truthful, and partaker of everlasting life, which was meant for humans. God bless you.